Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to correctly fill out a Massachusetts title when buying or selling your car privately, along with what other documents you need when registering your car, and also where to look to make sure the title is not branded or salvaged. All right, so let's first take a look at the front of the title. The top portion of the, of the title is the vehicle's information, year, make, model, VIN, etc. <clears throat> then underneath that is the mailing address, uh, which the title was registered to be mailed to when the owner registered it. Uh, that could be like a P.O. box. Um, the, um, underneath that is the current owner's name and address. Um, so for this situation, I covered up the real owner's name and I just put SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, here's a tip. I always recommend you ask the seller to show you some form of identification like a driver's license so you can make sure the name on the title matches their ID. You don't want to have any issues when registering the vehicle because there's a lot of people out there that will buy a car from someone, not register it, and then try to sell it for a profit pretending to be that person on the front of the title. This is called floating the title and it is illegal so watch out for that. Next to the right, title type and brands. This is where you would see uh, a brand if the title was branded, for example if it was salvage, for collision, fire, flood damage, theft, vandalism, you would see it in this box. Also, if it is branded PART, P-A-R-T, this means the vehicle can never be registered in Massachusetts, and it is only for parts. So watch out for that as well. On a clean title, you wouldn't see anything listed here, just like this title. All right, let's continue down. First and second lien holder. If this vehicle is being financed from a bank or any type of lender, their information would be listed here. If there is a lien listed, then the lien release portion of the title must be completed. If it is not completed, then a lien release letter from the lien holder on their letterhead will be accepted when registering. This is proof that the vehicle has been paid off. So pay attention to this portion because you will not be allowed to register the vehicle if this portion is not filled out or if you don't have that payoff letter. Um, again, this portion only has to be filled out if there is a lien listed. All right, so that's it for the front. Let's get to the back and I'll show you how to fill it out. This is the backside of a Massachusetts title. When selling or buying a car privately, you only have to worry about the top section that says assignment of certificate of title by owner. The rest of the sections is for dealers only. Okay, so starting from the top, first you put the agreed upon sale price of the vehicle. For example, SpongeBob is selling his car for $1,000. Um, because this is a private sale, the registry will tax you on the market value of the vehicle. Their system will pull a number based on the VIN. Um, so if you want to find out how not to pay any sales tax, I'll make a separate video on that and link that in the description below. Um, so for now, I will just put $1,000. Next is the purchaser's name, address, um, and date. Make sure whoever's name you sign here is the name of the person or people who will be registering the vehicle. For this example, we'll use Patrick Starr. And uh, be very careful when filling out the title. You cannot mess up. No scratches or scribbles. The registry won't accept it. Trust me, I've tried many times, so don't even waste your time. I recommend using an erasable pen. Um, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to buy the kind I use. They work great and don't leave erase marks. All right, so let me fill this part out. Spelled controng, so I had to change the K to a C. All 
data sale I'll put today. Make sure all three of these dates are the same. In this box, you want to put the exact mileage of the vehicle. So for my case, I will put 165, 102. These boxes on the right, you just leave blank. You would only check these off if you were sure uh, if you weren't sure what the real mileage was or if the dometer was uh, cluster was replaced or broken you couldn't read it seller of signature this is where the seller signs and prints their name so for this title it would be uh, spongebob if the title is issued in more than one name then all the owners listed on the title must sign as the seller uh, if you are signing on behalf of a company, then you must state your position as well. And then signature purchaser is where the purchaser will sign their name and print it again um, as well and then date it. So that would be Patrick's signature. And then you're done filling out the title. The buyer, however, will need a couple more things to register the vehicle. One is a bill of sale. You can just print out any generic one. I'll also put a link in the, uh, in the description to a generic one. And then the other is an RMV1 form, which uh, I'll also put a link for the form in the description. <clears throat> I'll also put a video uh, in the description on how to fill out the RMV form um, once I make it, but it's fairly simple. Some insurance companies will provide you uh, this for you. I know like Geico Insurance does. When filling them out, just make sure everything matches up um, with the bill of sale and the title. So same names, addresses, dates, vehicle mileage, um, etc. Once the buyer has all three of these things, title, bill of sale, and RMV1 filled out, then they must get the RMV1 stamp by their insurance agent or provider. Um, this is the registry's proof that you have insured the vehicle. Then you can go to the registry of motor vehicles to register your car and get license plates if needed. All right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you found any value in this video, then please throw me a thumbs up and comment down below. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos.